Hi everyone, William Garcia, Partner Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services. Today we are back with another video to discuss developer experience with Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS or Rosa. I'm also with Kevin from Red Hat. Hey Kevin. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Kevin Yi. Uh, I'm the manager of OpenShift Lab Belt at Red Hat. Great to have you today. So super excited to start talking about how can we help developers build quality into the applications with uh, Rosa. And uh, obviously, one of the key benefits has been to you know use the platform for its agility, help you to essentially get to production as quickly as possible. So I'd like to understand a bit more this topic today. Can you get us started? Yeah, sure. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, uh, time to market is crucial to the uh, for the business to get the competitive advantage. With Red Hat Developer Tools, it can help you in multiple ways to shorten the learning curve for the developers without knowing too much about uh, Kubernetes knowledge and also help you to replicate uh, consistent environments, making sure that you have consistent runtime versions and dependencies across different environments yeah, and also help you to push your code to the production. So overall, I would like to elaborate this in three major steps. Okay. Yeah, step one, is all about the uh, jump start. Jump starts. Right. So, for example, as a developer, I want to immediate uh, access to a cluster, learn uh, to to learn about uh, Rosa without spin off a cluster. Then you can access developer sandbox. Yeah. This service provides you a thirty days free access. So, the only thing. Uh, you need is to write to uh, go to Red Hat website to register a Red Hat account. Right. So at this point, you're already just pressing a button, and not you don't really need to be concerned about infrastructure as code tools. This makes an OpenShift cluster available to you pretty quickly. Exactly. Okay. And next step, I would encourage you to sign up. To, uh, to our developer hub. So at pad level, developer hub is a developer portal with self-service uh, applications uh, along, uh, along with guardrail. And uh, it's kind of like a single pane of a class uh, with all the application develop, uh, developer tools, services to, you know, to help you uh, increase your uh, productivity. Okay. So this, I guess, is for teams who want to share, let's say, documentation, who want to um, start sharing, for example, skeletons of code and best practices, they can start really using that. Uh, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So uh, it's kind of like a one-stop repository. So over there, you have all the things for the developers. Right. Yeah. Then, Kevin, uh, I also wanted to talk about the developer catalog, which I know is available within Rosa directly. Uh, our customers really like it because it enables them to deploy quickly certain types of applications. So can you let us know a bit more about it? Yeah, sure. Um, basically, with developer catalog, you can deploy sample applications and you can find the ham charts and also deploy applications from the uh, repository. So the, uh, the, the developer service, the services or applications like a database, and many others you can deploy. Okay. So, so this is uh, really the, once you have your cluster deployed from the sandbox, you can go and start really using some of these pre-created language runtimes and deploy very quickly your, your, your application. That's from, right. From Git, yeah. That's right. Awesome. So combining all of these three services give you a great start point. Uh, however, we don't stop here. So, if you want to move to next level, uh, I'm go uh, we need to look at the build phase. So, in this phase, it's all about uh, as a developer, you build uh, your applications in your local environment. Mm -hmm. So, think it as a loop with some small iterations here. Right, so you you have code. You start coding, right? Testing, I guess, all as well. Right, testing, debugging, 
and or also uh, run it in a local environment. Alternately running on your machine. Makes sense? Yep. Yep. So, so at that point, Kevin, I guess there is obviously a few different ways to go about this in terms of using uh, Red Hat developer tools. I'd like to see perhaps like what's the progression there and where do you start? <laughs> yeah, sure. So we have uh, multiple ways to help you. So first of all, you you have, I mean, the first option you have is uh, ODO. ODO, the ODO CLI. CLI, yeah. Basically, it's a uh, uh, it's take the source from a dev file, which is a uh, I mean uh, either manually or automatically generated uh, uh, okay. definition of your application. So yeah. the dev file is the container definition. It's either generated by Odo based on detecting the language of your code base. That's right. Or either you can bring bring that. You can include uh, uh, dependencies as well. Okay. Okay, and then you deploy it to your local environment through Podman. Podman, okay. Correct. So that's the container runtime environment. Great. So another option you have is, uh, we call this OpenShift Toolkit. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's a, a plugin for your favorite uh, IDE, like uh, Virtual Studio or IntelliJ. So since it's a plugin, installation is quite straightforward. It's just one click. So this time round, with this tool, basically you can de uh, debug, you can deploy lively through a, a Visa-based uh, approach. Okay. okay. So this tool, the good thing is it can, you know, uh, smart enough to propose the HAM chart installed to manage the, I mean, dev-based components based on that repository makes sense yeah in which you can find a lot of uh, templates out there and also you can use that to you know deploy your applications from a git repository right so you can also use it i guess to deploy against your openshift sandbox but let's say as well like against uh, an existing rosa cluster that you have let's say for example only for development exactly okay exactly yeah the, th the third option here is, I mean, uh, as a developer, usually you work as a group, mm -hmm. as a team, right? So in O2, uh, so we, we also have an option called uh, Dev Spaces. Dev here. Spaces. Yeah. So uh, basically it's a browser-based IDE. So within the IDE, uh, what you can do is, I mean, uh, you have a working copy of your uh, source code, it's centralized and managed on the Rosa cluster where your developer spaces, uh, workspaces are running. Yeah, so at this point, you don't even need to have a local environment. You can use that, for example, directly with your code hosted into the environment. And uh, I've seen people using it for pair programming, for example. So that's Yeah, it. exactly. So it eliminates the problem like uh, it works on my laptop. All right. Amazing. Next step then, <laughs> next up. Yeah, so now it's time to, you know, take your local development to production department. All right. So it comes to the third step, release. In this, in this cycle, what we, the key activity we have include uh, automate. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at you know now fully automating the pipeline to deploy our, our, our application. So that's really the one of the first steps. CI/CD. That's example. right. That's right. And then you test. After testing, maybe you you start to create, scan, and then. You push your push. images. That makes sense. Okay, and then eventually you deploy it into your production environment. Of course, you would like to monitor how it goes. Mm -hmm. So this is your sort of second iteration. I suppose you use that to 
streamline changes going from dev to UIT to production? That's right. So we have dev to UAT to production. As an example of as an example in of environment. Yeah. environment. So in order to complete this cycle, we also have a bunch of tools to help you. The primary the primary tool would be we have S2I. S2I, source to image. Source to image. So what it does is it, again it detects uh, detects your, your language and it's able to create an image, push it for you, and then run your application. Exactly. So it takes the source code and then create the image uh, for you. Okay. okay. Great. And after that, uh, basically you can create uh, uh, your pipeline, CIC pipeline, mm -hmm. through open, through open shift pipeline, which is based on an tactile pipeline. It allows you to create the end-to-end CI/CD pipeline. Okay, so this is pipeline as code using YAML definitions, where you can define the steps to run, build, test, and uh, yeah, correct. Go through all the steps you mentioned right. before. So once you already have your images and uh, you test it, now the next uh, thing is you want you would like to you know deploy it uh, to a cluster. So you can leverage OpenShift in R, which is based on Tecton, uh, which is based on uh, uh, Argo CD. Yeah. Yeah. So this tool can uh, help you to automate the application and also infrastructure installation. Fantastic. So all these different components are operator-based. We can, you can install them through the operator hub available in Rosa. Look, I think this is a great uh, comprehensive overview of what you can do, where you can start as a developer from, you know, beginning without too much prior knowledge of Kubernetes up to production. I'd like to thank you for your overview today. We'll share a few links in the description for you so you can get started quickly with these different steps. Be sure to stay tuned for other videos like this in the future. And thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.